today we're gonna make our shop's most popular ice cream. I wanted to give you guys a like show of what the ice cream is, but <laughs> we sold out of it. <laughs> Honestly, we make it like 10 times more than any other ice cream and we are we still find ourselves selling out of it Okay, so instead of actually showing you the finished product the ice cream, which we will do at the end um, I'll just talk you through how we came up with the ice cream and the ingredients that go into our ice cream that we put into it um, When we first opened our shop in February 2016 there was this one guy student UW student who would always come in every day and he would get our chocolate ice cream with Oreo bits and hot fudge on it and he loved it so much every single day he would bring in more friends and every time he got this as a Sunday, he would like tell everyone in the shop who's waiting in line behind him that they everyone needed to get it and so like every time I saw him coming in like walking up the street I would know what I needed to get and everyone in the shop also got that he just had this like energy that would be like this is the best thing ever <laughs> everyone needed to eat it and yeah so we were like oh you know what we should put this all into the ice cream and make this ice cream be that flavor so that's how we came up with the ice cream we now call dark side um thank you youtube student of 2016 <laughs> These are the ingredients that go into the base of our ice cream today. Um, we're going to pasteurize um, half quantity of what we usually do just so we don't have to make the video can be a slightly shorter. So the base of our ice cream, what we're going to pasteurize is cream, milk, organic cream, organic milk, organic sugar, organic egg yolks, and milk powder. And the things that we are going to put into it before we start churning is farola cocoa powder, a little bit of salt, a little bit of our own blend of vanilla. So this is what goes into the base of the ice cream before we churn. This we will pasteurize in a pasteurizer today. I'll show you that. I'll, we'll do that process too. Now after we put the ice cream into the churner, when it comes out, we're going to put these two ingredients into it. And these two will actually make today. Um, this is Oreos. Yeah, we make our own Oreos to go into our ice cream. It's actually amazingly good. And the good thing about this Oreo is we don't need to, um, it doesn't need to be pretty shaped. We just like crumble it up um, because it doesn't need to be in a disc shape when it goes into an ice cream. So we will make this. We'll also make the ganache. And make it into a few of these pints as well as tubs for Scoopy. So yeah, that's the plan for today. Want to get started on the pasteurizer with me? It takes the longest. I'm gonna put the sugar in first because sugar is a water soluble um, ingredient and milk powder isn't, so the agitation should help it. Now I'm gonna put egg yolks into it. Egg yolk is the only emulsifier that we're gonna use in our ice cream.
Indicating thermometer. People walk by our window and ask us what this is for. Um, they're like, "Are we recording seismic activities?" I'm like, "No, no, no, no. It's we're just um, it's just temperature over time. It's a 24-hour period. So we're just recording um, what the temperature is over a period of." how many hours that pass by and we need that as a recording because we need to show to WSDA uh, Washington State Dairy and Agriculture Department that we're pasteurizing everything to the right temperature so this is the temperature of the ice cream mix um, it needs to go up to 160 let's see what's programmed to it's programmed to 161.1 right now and this is the airspace um, temperature of the airspace that airspace above the ice cream mix always needs to be at least five degrees warmer than the actual ice cream mix so nothing so it doesn't form a skin and it, like nothing can grow on that skin while the ice cream is being heated up the ice cream mix is 110 airspace 155 you can actually see the um pen marks coming on on the chart now it's going well. A little double boiler bot pot. Turn it off. We need to take the air spacer out, heater out. And this machine is nifty because it has a cooler attached to it and it costs another $15,000 to attach a pool into it. But we just turned this on. It starts the cooling process. So it was at 160 for 30 minutes. Um, and now you're going to see the chart go drastically down that way. It needs to go under refrigeration temperature, under 40 degrees. A double turn, double bath. Um, there's going to be two turns of banana cola, pentamine, and two turns of third slice. The thing about pairing these two together is they both don't need anything baking in them. Um, we usually put the tea or coffee or cardamom or other steeping ingredients in at this moment. But yay, we don't need to put any steeping things in, so we can put it into a big bucket. let it run over so many times have like so much ice cream base everywhere <laughs> never again
mana extra. I'm going to sift together all my dry ingredients. Mm, baking powder, flour, baking powder, salt. That is. Now I'm going to cream together my butter and sugars. I microwave this for 10 seconds. So shh, it's room temperature butter. Sugar and brown sugar. I forgot to get the attachment. I'm going to cut the butter a little just so it doesn't go fly everywhere. Good. Once the flour goes into um, cookie or cake batter, you always need to watch out because you don't want too much gluten to form. Because then you get pizza dough instead of crumbly cookie. Okay. All the dry into the fat. What? easier to tell with an all chocolate base um, if the fat is all incorporated because the color is different. I'm going to get some off of there too. Make sure those all get well incorporated. This is it. The dough is done. It's very crumbly and sticky, hard to work with, so we're going to refrigerate it. Into the refrigerator it goes. Well, it's been resting in the refrigerator for two hours, I think. Um, we usually have a better bench scraper, but we can't find it right now. It's really easy. Go into a 350 oven. These are her Oreos. Charles, you have to taste this. It's amazing. You're not gonna care to taste it. I'm gonna have one too. The Oreo it tends to be kind of drier on the drier side. It's like a sandy texture cookie. So when it goes into ice cream, the ice cream base kind of like soaks it up. Uh, yeah, soaks up the cookie, so it becomes more like Oreo, oh, I mean brownie pieces in ice cream. It's like it becomes chewier, and so the chocolate kind of like comes out more.
for chocolate that we use in our ganache, we get an 11 pound giant block of Calibut dark chocolate and we chop it up. It's like one of our downtime tasks. So here's our ganache making. It's, um, we don't really have a recipe, it's just four to three ratio. So right now we have 800 cream and uh, 600 chopped chocolate. Um, we're just gonna bring the cream to a boil. Especially when I'm doing like one thing at a time like this. You got a snack. Mm. Chocolate's so good. <laughs> Yay! Finally it's done. Okay, turn it off. And we're going to Pour this cream into our chocolate. Mmm, smells so good. Emery Thompson that's different from other ice cream making machines like Carpaggiano is um, it's a spring. There's a spring in here so it pushes the blade outward so it's always scraping at the very edge of the barrel which is important because this machine the out the, there's a barrel in here and the outer barrel freezes up and the the scraper, this plastic scraper, scrapes the outer edge, um, the ice cream mix from the outer edge as the outside is freezing and incorporates that frozen parts into the ice cream. And it does it really fast. I we rotate it like it can go from 120 until up until 236, I think, rotations per minute, and it can go really fast. So that's how you make ice cream. You freeze it while churning it. <laughs> like the other gelato machines, Carpaggiano's, they, you can just take like the whole door off and that's it. You can just wash that door and then put it back on. But Emily Thompson, you have to undo every single component, every single spring. It's pretty heavy. You gotta one hand it so you can put that in there. Put 
water on one at a time. And tighten it so you're evenly applying the pressure. Let's turn it on. And then the light turns on. And then it starts booting up. There's like a little computer chip in there. That's our ice cream making corner. So we got our Emery Thompson and we got our flat pasteurizer. our dark side out a little because with a little extra sugar and salt and vanilla um, put a little extra sugar in to offset the balance of the bitter chocolate dash of salt drizzle of vanilla so that's our chocolate base. We use Valrol Nut Dutch chocolate because that's my favorite type of chocolate. Okay, and into the Turner discounts. Lid on, towel on, turn it for 340. Yeah. Bring it on.
you want a scoop? Dark side? Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is the first one we made today, which was about three hours ago. So the center shouldn't be set yet, but this side should be okay. So the portion size in our shop is three ounces and we call this a pico scoop it looks so good wait i'm gonna get some more brownies on top and some more ganache yeah This is our dark side. It's our most popular ice cream. <laughs> Anyone who's ever had our dark side, don't go back. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so we use Dutch processed cocoa powder in our Dutch in our ice cream, in our dark side ice cream. Um, it's processed in alkaline solution, which neutralizes its acidity. Um, so it's darker in color, it's mellower in flavor, and so we can load it up and kick a really good chocolate punch without it getting too like bitter and you know the the notes in chocolate that a lot of people so, like non-chocolate lovers kind of stray away from. So Dutch processed cocoa powder that we use doesn't have a lot of that in it. So we we put a lot of the cocoa powder in our ice cream to um, pack a pretty good punch of chocolate flavor. And we use that in our Oreos as well as the um, brownies and the fudge that's in here. Look, that's a really nice, dark, but mellow and sweet chocolate flavor in there. over to the dark side. Mm -hmm. 